Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know is that this is 4 f Beauty. You have just watched a spanking new intro designed for me by the wonderful L Loves T. You may also have noticed that and my logo has changed because she's designed me a new logo as well. Bless her heart. And today is the first of the third new series debuting on my channel this week. It is still talking about Capricorn. But this particular film is talking about the crystals of the Zodiac. So, if you want to find out exactly which gemstone or crystal is the stone that represents the Capricorns amongst you, and you want to find out a little bit more about what the stone signifies, then my friends, as I have said almost since the beginning of my channel, and which you may have heard echoed in other channels, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Here it comes. Hey, welcome back for the intro that clearly I haven't filmed yet. I'm still looking a little bit pink because I've literally just taken tomorrow's film's makeup off to do today's film makeup, which is going up tomorrow. Confused yet? Excellent. Um, I would have told you in the intro, but still, this is the uh, third new series of mine. Um, and this is the stone, or the crystal, or the gem of the zodiac. Um, I know Capricorn falls in December and January, but because the gemstones are per month rather than... So I'm getting confused because I've got a little yellow box here <laughs> and then a big white box there that's recognising her face. So, yay, go camera. Um, hmm. Because the um, crystals or the stone of the month or the gem of the month, whatever you want to call it, um, are monthly rather than in the zodiac star sign dates. I'm taking the first of the month and the first of the month falls into Capricorn so and the bulk of Capricorn falls into January so January's stone is a garnet which can the majority of garnets are recognized as being a red but they can be anything from a deep uh, fuchsia pink right the way through to a deep burgundy blood red although the the majority of people think of garnet as being like traffic light red so at the end I will tell you more about the stone but this remains a teaching channel even though this is a new series with a new intro there's a new outro as well both designed for me by the wonderful Elle Loves Tea. Um, she is so damn clever. So, so damn clever. I just, well, I adore them. She's even done me new logos. Brilliant. So, I'm feeling all brand spanking shiny and new for this film. Because this is the first film that is having the new intro, the new outro, and the new logo. 
<laughs> I'm getting very Italian on you all of a sudden. Uh, because this remains a teaching channel, uh, speed widgets up there, speed me up if you need, doesn't bother me at all, but I want beginners or people wanting to learn new techniques to be able to follow on. And people like me with chronic pain that can't go as quickly and perhaps need to take more breaks. Um, the palette I'm going to use, I was going to use my blood sugar by Jeffrey. But that stains the heck out of my eyes and I need to do some more filming tomorrow. Um, so then I was considering using the Main Squeeze Watermelon Palette from Colourpop. But I know a lot of people in the UK find that difficult to get hold of. So I decided to use the Mini Berries Palette by Juvia's that my friend Kay sent me. Because that pretty much covers all the colours of a garnet. It really does. So I'm going to have fun playing with these. Shadows I will number as one, two, three, four, five, and six for those of you wondering because this does have no colours or palette colour names on it. So I am, as I have done for a long time and long before any other channel decided to start mentioning it. Yes, I know you're watching all of my films and I hear you repeating stuff that I say and copying things that I do. Don't worry darling, Oh, we will catch up with you. But a lot of people, um, including some of the bigger beauty gurus on here, confuse deep set eyes with hooded lids, which is understandable. Um, they have very similar issues in terms of application of shadows and wear of shadows, but the the workarounds for them, the way that you you deal with the different eye types can make the difference between an eye look looking grey and an eye look looking a bit, a bit wider the mark, you know. So I'm going to insert a clip in just a moment. It's going to be very up close and personal so don't scream. Um, I'm going to insert a clip where I discuss the differences very clearly between the two types of eyes and explain the workarounds for you. And then I'll be back to put some of this onto these. Here's the clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this, it is not affiliated, I don't earn money from it, but if you use my code you save, I think it's 15% and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over mm -hmm. with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. 
because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't so they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right so I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are with my brows relaxed and looking straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get so what are the workarounds if you have hooded lids get a brush something like this or a pencil brush sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using just sit back relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey, I am back. Right. This is a cheap brush that I picked up off of AliExpress, but I just really liked the handle on it. Basically, it's a big, wide headed, loosely packed blending brush. Because I want these to be quite a blown out, soft look today. So I'm going to start off with shade 2 which is this one here uh, and as I always do I would rather have less pigment on the brush and have to keep dipping in than have a huge amount on and have to worry about blending it out. That's also a tip for newbies. Tap off put as little pigment on your brush as you can until you're used to how pigments work. If you want to practice blending, practice on the back of your hand rather than on your eye because then you're not going to be pulling your eye around when you take it off and try blending a different colour. Right, always hold the brush at the very end so you put as little pressure on as possible and we're going to start with the what I call the Viennese Waltz of the blend which is natural turn, a fleckle in the middle, and then a reverse turn to come back out. I will explain what that means and show you. So, little circular movements. These are your natural turns. Circling towards the nose. Bit of a bounce in the middle, that's your fleckle. And then reverse the direction for your reverse turns or blending away from the nose as you come away from the nose. Now the reason I do this is because I'm 45, I'll be 46 in May and I've lost 14 stone or more which is 200 plus pounds so the skin on my eyelids moves. But I know 20 year olds who've always been slim that have an issue with flexible eyelids, shall we call them? 
um, and this particular method gently moves the skin around to stop you from getting if you were to just do this you're likely to get a barcoding effect which I'll be able to show you over here because I've got these super deep creases from where this eye was pulled around this is the eye that I'm blinding and the blending method doesn't always work for me over that side so I'll be better able to show you what I mean about the barcoding effect there. What I'm doing here now, now I've got the colour laid down. I'm not putting any more pigment on the brush. But I'm just continuing to buff over the edges and really buff and blend that out. Because it is possible to get a gradient blend with just one colour providing the shadow is of high enough quality and you can be patient enough with your blending because this is the problem where a lot of um, channels which pride themselves on being faster and not as slow and boring as me uh, where they fall down is that if you are a beginner you don't realise sometimes just quite how long it can take in terms of blending. So you see them stop blending and you think oh well, I must, must have to stop blending now then. What you don't see is that they've paused their film or they've cut out probably a good 10 minutes of blending time that you don't see. I don't do that. I do, unless I'm doing a get ready with me, I do cut out putting foundation on because I, I do separate foundation films but in terms of putting on an eye look I don't cut anything out as a, as a, as a rule I do sometimes if I'm doing a cut crease and it's starting to make the film a bit long I'll do one eye at normal speed and then speed the other eye up but you have the ability to change the speed of the film. So you can speed me up if you need, or you can slow me down if you need. But you see, I, I tagged my channel as being ASMR because I was getting so many comments from people about how you need to talk faster, you need to talk louder, blah blah blah. Apart from when I'm singing or screaming across a rugby field from many years ago now, sadly. Um, I'm very soft spoken. I always have been. Um, and People have noticed my accent on certain words that I say. Uh -huh. Shh. Why does my phone always buzz when I'm filming? When I'm editing, nothing. When I'm filming, off it goes. Um, yeah, people have noticed when I say things like seven and, you know, cushion and stuff like that. They notice the the Welshness of my accent coming out, but I'm half Welsh, half Yorkshire. The thing is, if I were to speed up how I talk, the Welshness of my accent comes out a lot more. And trust me, you would find that difficult to understand. Um, that's why the majority of Welsh people speak quite slowly because we want you to be able to understand us. You know? So I just figured tagging it as ASMR would just stop people moaning. Um, which it did. But then I got people going, you're not really ASMR, you're not doing all of... nonsense. I do sometimes. But it's, uh, 
it's amazing when you've got a channel what people will moan about it's also amazing when you start watching other films and hear people you repeating your words without giving you credit for them and you're like hmm okay see what you did there I'm watching you got my beady eye on you got my sake pants on again today apparently my sassy britches well, according to some people I have my sassy britches on all the damn time <coughs> Right, I'm happy with that blown out of that shadow. Just cleaned the brush off on a microfiber cloth. I don't like using colour switches anymore. They're far too rough on your brushes, especially natural hair brushes. Um, I'm going to go into shadow one with the same brush. This will either go very well or very badly. You can hear I tapped off there. You can see, I hope, the loose pigment on top. All you do is you pick it up when you need to add more pigment to your brush. I really don't mind when palettes have kick up because at least you can get the pigment onto your damn brush. So I'm going to do the same manoeuvre, still little circles, but much lower down this time, more towards my crease. So I want to build this colour up and so that it fades out as it goes up the eye so that it's almost like this bit is the, the middle of a garnet this is the deep part of the stone and then as you get towards the edges where you've got more of the faceting you can see different tones and more light coming through. So that's the effect I'm looking for. Now, yes, there's a lot of fallout here. It really, really doesn't bother me because I actually do my, my base afterwards because when you've got movable eyes, you get fallout. It's just what happens, basically. Um, if you are the sort of person who wants to do your base first, I would definitely advise putting a layer of powder down. Because as you can see when you brush this away, it does stain. So you need to put a layer of loose powder down to catch that. So again, if you're over a certain age, that would be the equivalent of baking, which... The only kind of baking you should do when you're the right side of 40 <clears throat> is the kind that involves eggs, flour, milk, sugar, butter, vanilla and an oven. I'm just going to pop some just on the outer edge there of the mobile lid and again just buff that in and really blend that up the eye. I hope you can see the difference between the two where this has got much greater depth of colour but it, as it fades up you don't suddenly see a line where it stops it just gently dissipates into and fades into that first pink that we put down. Do the same this side. Now because this side is my blind side that got pulled around a lot, the skin on this eyelid is a lot looser than the skin on my right eyelid. So I normally get considerably more fallout this side than I do on the other side. So again, just... Circular movements, really buffing that colour in and blending it into the pink and fading it up the eye. That's the effect that we're going for with this, which is why I've kept it to a, 
a big fluffy brush rather than coming down to a more tapered one because I want to keep that blown out look I want it to sort of gently fade into the first colour that we put down and pop a bit of this on the outer corner there same as I've done this side now if you are finding that the fallout is driving you crackers which mine will do when I get to the editing stage I will be going nuts with myself go nuts on my nuts sorry I've been watching the creaky blinder he's a Welsh man you know very funny very very funny indeed this is just a pad with some micellar water on and you can just but you can see there just how that colour holds on tight does not want to come off so that's what I was saying about making sure if you have done your base first that you've got something there to catch the fallout Gonna go with a more tapered brush, and I'm going to, once I've popped the pigment onto the brush, wet it with this Revolution Super Fruit spray. Because I'm gonna go in with one of the shimmers. Which one do I fancy today? That's a very good question. Don't poke yourself in the eye with a brush, Ange. Do I want the pinky one or do I want the red one with gold? I think I want. Hmm. Yeah, I think I want that one. Right, that is shade number four for those of you who are wondering. Now, these shimmer shadows do get hard pan but it's the kind of hard pan that you can still pick up pigment with okay just means it's got a lot of oils in the formula you can see it's this is like a pencil brush but just bigger basically I think it's called a pointed crease, I'm not sure. So I've wet both sides. I need to dry this ferrule off. The easiest way to do that, tuck into the knuckles and spin. Because the last thing you want is moisture getting down here and loosening your bristles. The reason I like this shape brush, and I very often use the Jeffrey Morphe brush as well, is that it comes down to a point so I can get right into this corner see and I'm just gonna pop this on the two thirds of my mobile lid that to this point I've not seen any colour Then using the very tip of the bristles, very lightly, just buff that edge there and blend it into the matte shade. Okay. Dry my brush off, so I'm not going back in with a wet brush. And I'm going to reload with pigment. Again, 
I don't know if you can see that, yeah, you can see the hard pen there, look. That's the area that I'm actually going over to pick the pigment up from. Because I want to see whether I can pick it up when it's hard panned. And you absolutely can. No problem at all. I am going to be doing a short film soon on how to deal with hard pan for shadows that are not as uh, helpful as this one. Right, can you see what I mean about the tiger striping here? Now, with shimmers, I absolutely have to stretch the lid out because if I don't, instead of them being blended on nicely like this, the pigment builds up loosely in the creases while it's wet. And then as it dries through the day, it ends up cascading down, getting into my eyes, getting down my face. It's really not nice, but you can see what I did there was I only pulled the lid out as far as I needed to. I didn't pull it right out to my ear roll. And as soon as I got it blended to the point I needed, I let go. Alright. And then again, using the tip of the bristles just to blend that in to the matte shade. Right, while I clean this brush off, I will tell you that I'm about to pause you and I'm going to put some foundation and whatnot on. And then I will be back to finish this eye look with you. Now, Whilst I am going to have to wait until the next time I press record to talk to you, for you, my darlings, it will be absolutely instant. So I will see you right now. Hey, I'm back. I had been asked to show, and I almost completely forgot, um, how I do my brows. Now, I've got the Revolution Soap brow thing, which is okay, but... Goodness me, that brush gets gunked up. You have to clean it out so often. Um, if you've got a clean spoolie, you can just use that on an ordinary bar of soap and just whack it through your brows. But while they're still a little bit tacky, if you grab a brush like this, I'm going to go into shade 6, which is the darkest one in the palette. Just dip the tip of the bristles into the colour. And then start drawing little hair strokes on. If you start from the middle, you shouldn't put it too heavy at the front here. And just because I've, I've got coloured brow pomades, but I noticed that they've not been on Revolution's site for a while. And a lot of people were saying they really like having the coloured brows like I've been doing. How can they achieve it without the pomade? Because they can't afford to buy the expensive coloured pomades. So this is a way you can do it. You don't have to use the soap brow option. Um, you could just use like a clear brow gel but then while the brows are still a little bit tacky because obviously you want them to to grab hold of the colour just bear in mind though if a colour will stain your eyelids it will also stain the skin under your brows so tomorrow, for example, I will probably still have faintly pink brows. However, that doesn't bother me. I quite like having faintly pink brows when I wake up in the morning. But if that is something that's going to, to, to annoy you, then bear that in mind. Right. I'm going to go back in with this pencil brush again and I'm going to go back into shade number one 
and I'm going to very bloody carefully because I do not want to fall out from this I'm going to run this underneath my eyelashes on the lower lash line um, I've always struggled putting anything in my waterline or tight lining because my eyes have always, always been super sensitive. Um, they're also very sensitive to light, that's possibly because I only see with one of them, so the other one is, is reacting. And of course your eyes react in a pair, so what one eye does, the other one generally copies. Um, I've always struggled putting anything into my waterline so I prefer just to smoke out the lower lash line instead it still finishes the eye look off nicely um, but with my normally watery eyes plus hay fever plus fibro which makes your eyes run or can make your eyes run it can be a little bit frustrating I mean, my eyes are watering now just from putting this on the lower lash line even though it's not in my eye because it's close to my eye my eyes going are you going to put something in here do I have to start running everywhere am I going to so I usually keep a little piece of cotton just to try and catch any any threatening moisture But I am going to, where did I put, there it is, right I'm going to use the Ofra Nikki Tutorials Cloud 9 Highlight which is a white base with a peachy pink glow to it. This is a really cheap lip brush that I got from eBay, goodness knows how long ago now, at least a decade at least. And I'm going to pop a little bit of this under the tail of my brow. Just to help lift the brow slightly. Because apparently ladies, along with our boobs and our bum and everything else, our brows sag with age. Isn't that great? And then I'm going to pop some of this on the inner corner and regular viewers will know that I like to bring mine underneath the tear duct and just sort of fade it into the colour that I've run underneath my eye. You don't have to do that, you can just do the inner corner like that but it really does brighten it up. But I do like to put it along underneath the eye, I think it just, with my eye shape anyway, it, it finishes the eye look off. For me, anyway. Right, I'm going to pause you, my darlings, for one last time. I am going to put highlighter over many, many places of my face. I'm going to pop some mascara on. I'm going to find an appropriate lipstick. And I will see you right now. I am back. Uh, obviously, same highlight, which I kind of went little bit ham with because well why not um, the mascara is uh, one of the sample mascaras that my friend Hedda sent me this is the Charlotte Tilbury full fat lashes and rather than a red lipstick because I thought I didn't want to go too OTT with the look today I know who am I um, I went in with one of my Gerard lipsticks this is between the sheets but I just thought it finished the look off just nicely. So, this is my look for Garnet, the January Gemstone or the Gemstone for Capricorn. Now, regular 4F babies, please double check you're still subscribed and while I tell you a little bit more about the garnet. 
The garnet represents purity, truth, love and devotion. Um, it represents love, faith and constancy, may provide directional guidance in the darkness, making it ideal for frequent travellers, which let's hope there's not too many of those at the moment. <laughs> yeah. It's also a symbol of friendship, loyalty, good health and devotion. Some believe it gives the wearers guidance in the night and protection from nightmares. And it's a symbol of eternal friendship and trust. And if you were to believe the Greek myths, Persephone, goddess of sunshine, and I have done a Persephone inspired look on my channel, she was captured by Hades. And as you know, once a year he would allow her back up into the world to visit her mother and that's when spring happens. After he released her, he gave her pomegranate seeds and it is said that the pomegranate seeds became the garnet. Hence its red, juicy appearance. Right. I really hope you've enjoyed the look and finding out a little bit more about the Garnet Gemstone for Capricorn. Now that you've checked that you're still subscribed, don't forget to hit that like button and leave me a comment in the comments box below. Do you have any garnet jewellery? Did you know the symbolism behind the garnet? Now that you know the symbolism of the garnet, who would you buy garnet jewellery for? Hmm? And it's quite acceptable to say yourself. If you are new to the channel, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, I don't always have my sassy britches on. But yeah, probably most of the time I do, to be quite fair. Uh, if you've made it this far through, I'm guessing there was something in the film that you have liked. If you would like to join our family, which is the nicest family on YouTube, just hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey, ring my bell, uh, jump through the hoops that YouTube want you to jump through to get notifications, and then... Hopefully you'll get one in four notifications for my new films. Speaking of which, there are two preceding films linked to this series and one to come for tomorrow. So if you haven't seen the preceding two, it might be an idea to catch up before tomorrow's one. If you have seen the preceding two, I have an awful lot of other films you can watch, including the Persephone inspired look. If you wanted to continue with the theme, shall we say. So as I have said and oft been uh, echoed with other channels, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and indulge. Right, my darlings, before you see my spanking new outro, also designed by the wonderful Elle Loves Tea, for which I cannot thank her enough. All that remains for me to say, as ever, my darlings, is you'll stay fabulous, and I will see you next time. Bye for now. Stay safe out there, y'all.